Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby and welcome back to World of Tanks. And today I've got a full tank review for you of a brand new tier 9 German tank destroyer. This is the Kanonenjagdpanzer T3 Jaeger. This vehicle is one of the most accurate tanks in the game with a semi-traversable turret and not the worst top speed. If you like gameplay, like on the Scorpion G and also of the, the tier 10 German a tech tree tank, the Griller, then maybe this will be the one for you at tier 9. However, the vehicle has quite a lot of drawbacks, which I'm going to be covering in the video today, to try and help you come to the conclusion whether this is a new tier 9 Scorpion, or whether it's just another opportunity to try and sell more premium tanks. So firstly, let's compare the T3 Jaeger to the other turreted German tank destroyer, albeit a tech tree tank, the WTL Panzer IV, the turreted premium American tank destroyer, the TL-7, and also the non-turreted Chinese tier 9 premium tank destroyer, the WZ-120 GFT. Immediately, the damage per minute on the T3 Jaeger is very disappointing, significantly worse than the WTL Panzer IV and the WZ-120 GFT. And while it does better than the TL-7, remember that thing has an autoloader, meaning it can do some pretty nasty burst potential. Now that is because this vehicle has a 120mm caliber gun with 420 alpha damage, which pales in comparison to the 128 with the 560 on the WTL Panzer IV and the 560 for the 130 on the WZ. This means this thing doesn't hit hard, and really it doesn't hit that often either with that poor reload for 120mm. It also means that you're not going to be able to overmatch 40mm plates in this tank, which can be really annoying against something like an STRV uh, 1030 or just trying to overmatch tanks roof decks, which the WT and the WZ120G can achieve. To add to this, the penetration is less than the other two tanks in this comparison. And when we compare the gold rounds, it has 326 millimeters of pen, which is way worse than the 340 heat that the WZ gets, and way, way, way worse than the 352 that you would get on the Waffenträger Alf Panzerfeer. Luckily, however, the vehicle carries more than enough ammunition, and its shell velocity is 1,210, which makes it very proficient, proficient at sniping, like the WTL Panzer IV. So all in all, the firepower on this tank is very disappointing. However, the gun handling is not. Look at these legendary statistics. 1.6 seconds aim time, amazing. Won't have to aim for very long before you're fully accurate. And look at the max accuracy. 0.28 is one of the best accuracies in the game. And if you're so inclined, you can further improve this with the field mods. The movement dispersion actually is the only bad aspect of this tank. 0.3 when moving and turning the tank. So you definitely want to have smooth ride on your driver. But look at the turret traverse dispersion. 0.06 is incredible, meaning that you pretty much don't need snapshot on this tank. And as long as you don't turn the vehicle and you only use its semi-traversable turret at 30 degrees to the left and 30 degrees to the right, you aren't going to have to aim for long. To cap it all off, this vehicle has 7 degrees of gun depression, a lot like the Griller, which gives it a significant advantage on the WTL Panzer IV and the WZ-120 GFT, meaning that it can be more flexible on a ridgeline than those two tanks. So, horrible firepower, some of the best in class gun handling, what about the mobility? Well, 45 forwards and 18 backwards, so it's definitely not slow. It is significantly faster than the WTL Panzer IV, although I'd say all in all it is slower than the WZ-120 GFT, which gets better ground resistances and a much better, well, not, a, not that much better of a top speed of 47 and 20 backwards. The traverse speeds on this vehicle are not bad. 30 degrees on the turret means it is quick to turn, and when you combine that with that wonderful turret traverse dispersion, you can quickly get your gun on target and then the aim time and the accuracy to be able to quickly re-engage tanks. Of course you have to worry about the limited gun arc so you don't want to turn the hull and get that horrible dispersion but as long as you plan you've got a nice wide gun arc to be able to cover a variety of areas. Uh, the power to weight ratio on this tank is also impressive allowing you to get up to that top speed limit and all in all the mobility it's decent. It's not a fast tank destroyer for sure but it is decent. So what about the armor on this tank? It's kind of like pretty good news so far for the gun handling the mobility. Well, the armor sucks. There's no other way to say it. 30mm of hull armor is truly horrific for this tank. That means that all 91mm caliber guns and pretty much every single heat round is going to overmatch this vehicle. Uh, so you're going to stand no chance of ricocheting anything off the hull. And the turret is really not much better. Its mantlet is not good. Its turret armor is not good. It's 40. So that means that all 121mm caliber guns are going to overmatch this tank. And even high explosive rounds will be challenging this vehicle's hull very, very easily. 
This is a glass cannon of glass cannons and tanks with good HE pen are going to laugh at this vehicle. It has some of the worst durability in the game, but luckily it doesn't have the worst hit points at 1650, but they're not going to last long with every single shot you take pretty much removing those hit points. Interestingly as well, this tank has the worst camo rating in this comparison, but not by much. The moving camo, however, is actually horrific compared to the WZ120 GFT, and it's even worse than the WTR Panzer IV, so this thing isn't really going to be getting anywhere sneaky. Also, the fact that this tank has 370 meters view range is a real drawback. That's going to force you to use coated optics irrelevant of having the field mods and irrelevant of having a really good Corolla premium consumable, apart from on certain maps where I guess you don't really care so much about your view range. This is a big disadvantage for this tank compared to something like the WZ120 GFT, which has more than enough view range to build a spot for itself. So there's also having that extra camera rating. So it's been a bit of a roller coaster with regards to the statistics on this tank. How does the crew work out? Well, all in all, it's, it's again a disappointing crew by Wargaming. I believe this is the first ever German tank destroyer where the commander is also the loader. And the gunner is also the loader, which means that if you want to have intuition on a vehicle like this, you're going to have to waste two crew slots. And it's just annoying to then also have two crew members that usually have quite a lot of pressure on them to try and have things like adrenaline rush or safe stowage to add to the matter. Realistically, I think most people with this vehicle are just going to have to give up on loader skills, which is fine now, but in the future it could be quite awkward if Wargaming do decide to revamp the crew system. Accordingly, I hope you kept a crew in your Borsig, because the Borsig is one of the only German tank destroyers where the commander is also the radio operator. I use my Borsig crew on the E25, which also the commander is the radio operator, and that means that I will have a decent commander because safe, having situational awareness is mandatory on a vehicle like this to try and pump up that poor view range. The gunner could pretty much come for any, from anywhere as long as you're willing to give up the loader skills. And driver luckily doesn't have to perform any other roles on this tank. Crew skills that I would try to focus on, again, recon situational awareness on your commander. Definitely take concealment on all of your crew to try and hide this vehicle. Brothers in Arms is mandatory in the current system. I would recommend getting a skill like Deadeye on this tank because it's got an okay rate of fire for being able to do damage to your opponents. And you're just so reliable with the gun. And I'd definitely take Smooth Ride on your driver to improve that horrible dispersion when you're moving. And off-road driving could make a fairly sluggish tank actually fairly okay. Equipment-wise, I'm running two builds on this tank. One is going to be Vents, Coated Optics, and a Gun Rammer to give this thing all-round scouting performance. Although some of you out there, if you really hate getting spotted in this tank, you might be wanting to run an exhaust instead of a module like the vents, for example. My second build on this tank, I'm going to be using a durability device instead of the coated optics. But I warn you that even with a perfect crew and a premium consumable and putting vents inside the, uh, the vision slot there, this tank then only gets 436 meters view range, which really won't allow you to see your opponents outside of close quarters distances. But still, for a map like Ensk, for example, or Himmelsdorf, sometimes that extra durability and just keeping your tracks on which are easily easily overmatched can help you out field mods wise uh you must take reinforced suspension which also improves the mobility of your vehicle i'd recommend taking accuracy over the aiming speed of this tank to give it truly legendary accuracy next you want to take the view range because it doesn't matter about concealment after firing for the final field mod it's going to be down to you personally i would improve the rate of fire of this vehicle as it has more than enough accuracy and even with nerfing it by five percent there you can still get down to 0.25 percent base accuracy by using standard equipment anyway i think that's quite enough theory crafting let's take the new t3 jaeger out onto the battlefield all right so the first map we're going to be playing on is glacier guess where i'm going to be going in a sneaky german tank destroyer with a turret that's right i'm going to go and try and find some kind of high ground and then just snipe that's really what this vehicle is uh, it doesn't really have the speed to be able to get around like you can on the Gorilla. It doesn't really have the alpha damage like on the Gorilla as well. Anyone who's played the, the tier 10 German turreted tank destroyer will know that hitting for 750 is just absolutely magical. But look at this gun. It literally just pretty much always goes exactly where you want it to. It's kind of got comparable gun feel to something like an strv 103 b or even the UDES. Um, but to have this turret is even better than having kind of like the siege mode where you're turning the tank to the left and to the right and sometimes it can feel like the gun goes over. I really can't let you, like, I really can't tell you exactly how incredible 
this gun feels for just sitting in this kind of a position. But look how much it blooms as soon as we have to turn. As soon as we have to turn, it gets really awkward. But even with it getting awkward, the aim time is still really nice. And this gives you more than enough freedom to be able to feather your target to try and find a shot through the rocks. And look how even when we're kind of really moving the reticle around, that it doesn't even really get that much bigger because of that wonderful dispersion on the turret. And so when you're engaging something at long range and you've got that 0.25 base accuracy with a build such as this with the vents, the chocolate, uh, and even making the accuracy 5% worse as you saw in the garage, you can just hit. That is 552 meters away. It's almost right at the cusp of my render distance. But I just felt so consistent with this tank of being able to hit my opponents. Now, look, this vehicle... It's not fast, it doesn't have the best of camo, so you really need to also be relying on your friends to be spotting for you. It doesn't have the best view range, remember, as well, so while you could set up this tank with binoculars, definitely if you're a free-to-play player out there, you might want to drop the coated optics, especially if you're not using a premium consumable or you don't have the best of crews, because the turret is fairly flexible, and so with binoculars it could end up giving you hyper view range that you might need to be able to spot out. But just look at this gun. We're hitting the Tiger, we're hitting the IKB, and all of these shells, they're not just hitting the target, they are hitting the target cleanly. This truly is a god-tier sniper when you get it onto a map like this. But, let me clarify, how often do you end up getting into a position like this in World of Tanks, where you have that opportunity to, uh, to really just spot the entire map? But not only just spot the entire map, but actually have a team that is spotting for you when there's no like light tanks and medium tanks that are trying to harass you. Remember, this is a tier 9 tank destroyer. It will meet tier 9 and tier 10 tanks just as much as it's really meeting these tier 7s on the enemy team in this wonderful matchup. Now, I'm going to be completely honest as well. Gameplay like this is not my cup of tea. This is... This is not interesting gameplay for me personally. I don't enjoy this kind of a playstyle. I almost feel as if I, I'm too safe right now. But just because it's not exciting gameplay for me doesn't mean that this isn't a playstyle that is immensely comfortable for a lot of the player base. And I have to respect people's wishes for tanks. There's a reason why the Scorpion G is one of the most purchased premium tanks and most played premium tanks even to this day. And that is because if you give a vehicle a turret and you give it a nice consistent gun for engaging at long ranges, it just feels so immensely safe to play. You just do consistent damage and that's exactly what this tank does. However, I would like to highlight that considering what kind of an opportunity we've had, 2,400 damage is not a lot. So while the gun is immensely consistent, it's not firing very often at all. I'd say it's got kind of like tier 8 tank destroyer damage per minute. In fact, one could argue it's actually got more like tier 7 tank destroyer damage per minute. Whereas a WTR of Panzer IV would be reloading pretty much just as often. It wouldn't have the accuracy, so maybe it would miss one of the shells that we fired so far this battle. But hitting for 560 instead of 420... Yeah, things could uh, definitely uh, up when you're hitting that hard. We've hit six shells this game, unsurprisingly, for the 2,400 damage that we've dealt, considering we've got 400 alpha. If we were hitting for 560 with those six shells, we'd be over like three, even more. It would be like 3,300 damage that we dealt. And with the seventh, we'd be packing kind of like near a 4k with the damage that we dealt. But this tank's sitting at 2,800. So the damage in this vehicle, it doesn't really add up that quickly. But it is so darn consistent with the way that it adds up. And also, I'd like to highlight that because of the accuracy... You can actually aim for weak points, not only for these, like, close quarters combat situations, but for these long situations like you have seen here. And so you don't need to load the gold quite so often, because you don't need to worry about your shell deviating and hitting a turret or hitting the thickest plate instead of hitting one of the thinner ones that hopefully you're aiming at. And so that can just allow you to probably end up saving some credits. Now, the standard rounds on this tank cost 1,125. Although, um, oh gosh, Amarak durability, evidently not good there. Even though I'm running safe stowage on this vehicle, the very first shot that hits this tank removes the Amarak. Uh, but yeah, it's it's quite an economical gun, but still I do feel that for the alpha damage, it's quite an expensive ammunition uh, loadout. But I guess if you're hitting all of your shots with pinpoint accuracy, does that even really matter? So we're going to come around the corner, put an easy shot into the lower plate of the CC Mark II. 
but it's kind of quite alarming that we're just going to get out traded so hard. So for every game that you, I get into, like this, where we really get that easy snipe off at the beginning of the game, and then later on we can start to trade our hit points uh, in close quarters combat because the tanks no longer want to sit out in the open, right? I get into scenarios where it just feels so horrendous to be either caught by something with high alpha damage or to be caught by something that uh, has an autoloader or even just caught by something that realizes they can fire HE through a very flat lower plate. This is an easy lower plate to hit from all angles with only 30 millimeters of armor. It does not go a long way. So all in all, the Jaeger is very good for hunting at long range. But there are lots of tank destroyers that do very well at long range. Does this one really do well enough at long range to justify purchasing it as a tier 9 premium? And that's kind of a decision that only you're going to be able to make. Okay, so no more damage in this round. We've seen how the vehicle performs in its environment, in its element, where it's simply just dumping at long range very comfortably. Why don't I show you a couple more situations where this vehicle feels like it struggles a little bit more. All right, so now we're rolling out on ends, and I'm going to be getting rid of those coated optics and instead taking a durability device. We see that puts me up to 1,790 hit points, which is pretty darn good for a tier 9 tank destroyer. But remember, it's only truly our hit points that are going to be keeping us in this, as we don't have very good armor at all. So I'm going to make a little bit of a sneaky play here and try and use a bush that I haven't used too many times in World of Tanks. And look at this accuracy. We're going to try and go for the side. Maybe not. I'm not sure if he was firing at someone behind me or if it was just painfully obvious that there was somebody in a bush here. Nevertheless, nice blind fire by the Chrysler. Uh, and I think the Chrysler's packing a 105mm caliber gun, so that's going to be overmatching pretty much most of my tank. But ooh, a rare miss for this vehicle. It deviated, went left. We didn't hit the lower plate on the Chrysler. But still, a good enough rate to fire on this tank to be able to consistently harass our opponents. And with a turret like this, it does feel very comfortable for going into a bush and falling back. I kind of feel more like a medium tank within that regard. And this would be a very good gun to have on a medium tank. Kind of like similar to the uh, Leopard prototype within that regard. Uh, with only having AP rounds instead of APCR. But the AP rounds on this tank are pretty much as fast as the APCR rounds that you'd be getting on the Leopard prototype anyway. So not a bad start now, up to 900 damage with a little bit of spotting, and this Chrysler doesn't seem to want to come around the corner anymore. And honestly, gameplay like this is going to make and break whether you do well in the T3 Jaeger, or the T3 Jaeger isn't your best friend. Because anybody can sit at a good distance and play the point-and-click adventure. But really, making use of the tank's turret and being a little bit sneaky is what you're going to have to do if you want to perform on a map like this. And that will improve your all, your kind of like your holistic results, right? Which is what you're trying to go for. And in these kind of situations, boy, does it feel nice to just have that accurate gun and be clapping at these mediums. I don't think this tree is covering us any longer, but you know, when you're on Ensk, you really, you, you have to get your shots in. Luckily, the reload on this vehicle means that I think it actually restelts between its shots. Uh, although my sixth sense isn't going off here, so unless this T44 has the worst view range imaginable, I'm pretty sure he can actually see me in this scenario. And yeah, what's there to say? A consistent gun with decent penetration shooting at medium tanks. They're not going to last long for that. In this kind of a scenario though, it's like, do we get stuck in? Do we not get stuck in? It's really hard to, to pace this tank. And I think it is best trying to create lines of fire against vehicles that aren't just all inning you or aren't paying attention to you. So there's quite a skill in that in World of Tanks. And the players that do well in the T3 Jaeger will have to master this skill. So now I'm kind of advancing in because I feel like the game is won. We're up by three tanks. We're up by 3,000 hit points. Surely I need to get in and try and continue the assault on my opponent. And luckily, this turret is traversable enough to be able to go after the M5355. I'm lucky I set them on fire. If I didn't, I was going to be caught. I was going to highlight that how annoying is it that this tank has two loaders, so I can't do an intuition switch. Because on any other tank destroyer, I would have probably had the alpha damage on my AP rounds alone to one shot that tank. But on most vehicles, I can have intuition, so I could switch out to an HE shell to get the extra alpha damage to confirm the kill in that scenario. I was lucky 
that we managed to set the tank on fire. So another tier 9 German tank destroyer. This one without a turret. They put a shot into me. I put a shot into them. That's pretty much how this tank is going to go. But that WT Alpha Panzer IV actually surprised me there. I don't think they were spotted. And now things are getting really ugly as we're caught out. The Leopard hits me in the side. And suddenly, a game which I thought I was going to get to farm at the end of it. Oh, I've got farmed, right? After losing 900 hit points to the WT Alpha Panzer IV and the Leopard prototype, things are starting to look pretty darn ugly. And I think in this kind of a situation, it's, I'm only going to be able to get like one more shot in. Another thing that's annoying about having that crew is the fact that I'll never have adrenaline rush on this tank. And while my hit points aren't quite a low, low enough to have had adrenaline rush anyway, it's still nice to think that you do have skills like that. All right, the char aims at me. They kill me. They got me. Got me good. But still, 4,500 combined on a map like Ensk is a decent result. And I really wanted to highlight this with this game to show... I had so many games, like on Glacier, where I just sat and I sniped and everything felt wonderful about the vehicle. But for every game that I had that, I had like a couple where you spawn into horrible situations on close quarters maps, or you spawn against tanks that have good HE, or you spawn against lots of artillery, which this thing doesn't take very well, or you spawn against autoloaders. And I can't think of a worse tank destroyer to play against autoloaders or good HE rounds. Let's say a Char Future 4 comes around the corner, I put 420 into him. He goes, you what, mate? And then he's going to put four 390 damage shells into me. And he'll be able to put in three before I reload the second shell and then put the fourth and leave. And that, your hit points are not going to go a long way, especially when they can auto-aim at you and overmatch pretty much the entirety of your hull. So one more game to give you more tastes of the T3 Jaeger for all of its strengths and its weaknesses. We're going to be rolling out on a defense on Siegfried Line. And I guess there's so many different ways you could play this map in a tank that is this flexible. One would be the stereotypical sit up here and wait for the enemies to poke the ridge line and play like whack-a-mole with them, right? The second way to play this would be maybe to wake my way all the way towards the south and then shoot in towards the town. But the risk of that is that if you get spotted from the ridge line, that really the town is going to actually make fun of you. But what I think that I can do instead with 7 degrees of gun depression on this tank, now knowing that all of the enemies spawn towards the center, is make my way towards the ridge and see if I can take it to my opponents. Now remember, the turret on this tank, the gun is actually very high up, which means that while it kind of like looks like it's a French autoloader, it definitely isn't. But you don't actually have to expose too much of your turret on this tank to be able to get your gun on the target. So while you are taking risks every time you poke, when you're not exposing too much of your turret, it doesn't really feel like your opponents have that much of an opportunity to be able to go after you. So we're going to go forwards, put a round into the charioteer, and fall back. Nice trades. I do on average 420 to them, and I take like, what, about uh, 150, 170 from the AMX 1375. The charioteer obviously didn't really like what I did, so I get to draw them forwards into the line of fire from my Saladin and my Foshu is sitting back. This AMX wants to have a go at me as well. And while yeah, definitely not the best trades, and as we can see, like one of them hitting right towards the, the top left of my turret there, which again is easy to overmatch for 122mm caliber guns, or just easy for even tier 7 tanks to be able to pen. But I feel like by taking the fight to the enemy team here, that we can start to make pressure. Uh, and then hopefully if we win this, then we're going to be able to harass. Plus in this game, as you're going to see, the Kampfpanzer who on our team uh, is very good. And so honestly, if I didn't push forwards, I would probably still be sitting up on that ridge line. And we can see that the Fosh actually decided he, he, made, he made the right call, which was to push as well. If they didn't, then I think they'd just be sitting there and waiting and not doing much. For these kind of situations, this tank feels great. Enough penetration, enough accuracy to consistently hit the shots in. And heavy tanks, uh, at least, they don't feel like they, their armor means much when you've got so much pen and just so much accuracy on this tank. Although we can have all the accuracy in the world, but this T-44 is actually hiding themselves very well. In retrospect, it was a bit of a misplay by me to hang back there. I think I should have got forwards and gone after the Yank Tiger, maybe tried to lock down his tracks. And you can see that this can actually play the support gun role. Nice tracking shot there on the Yag Tiger. And oh, now we're farming. We get 560 tracking, 700 tracking, 1,000 tracking, 1,200 tracking. That was a great shot to be able to get that Yag Tiger. And it, this is kind of a situation of I'm actually shooting other tier 9 German tank destroyers. But I can, I can shout at them, get a turret noob. 
We managed to hit the tracks once again there on the Yak Tiger. So we get another 365 tracking. So from a like a Mark's perspective, this is actually turning into a pretty good game. This was one of the fastest Radley Walters medals I have ever seen. Looks like this Kampfpanzer has been shooting at the right time uh, to be able to pick up these kills. I have to admit, I, I think that the Kampfpanzer might have been holding a few of their shots. Or maybe, you know, the stars are just aligned and when you've got a great rate of fire like you have on the Kampfpanzer, maybe that's how it works out. And we'll see, is he holding? Is he holding? No, to be fair, he didn't hold there. I almost think he was thinking about it, but he didn't truly hold for the... Uh, the Pershing. So I think I'm going to say something a little bit cheeky to him. Maybe, possibly. We'll see. Uh, hopefully we can hit the G-Saw here and just so nice and consistent. Half decent. So it doesn't look like the Kampfpanzer is actually holding their shells. As they do manage to... Uh, they don't... doesn't look like they hold for that or maybe they're just not holding well. Are they holding here though? <gasps> it's tough. He did hit just after a, after a tank got him. And so I think I'm actually going to say something. I say, those kill steals, XD, I see you. And um, unfortunately, wasn't able to get the Fool's Medal. It puts F in chat. I guess maybe he really wanted the Fool's Medal. 5,000 damage, dot, dot, dot. What's that meant to mean? 5,000 damage for nine kills? What, 450 alpha damage a shot or something? Or should I say 550 alpha damage a kill? I don't know. We even know what the 5k means, bro. Because I got two with 4,500. But I digress. I'm getting distracted from the point. This is a T3 Jaeger tank review, not QB spots somebody who's, who may or may not have been holding shots for gills. And what we saw in this game is that this vehicle is fairly proficient at being a support gun. And it is not enough in this tank to just sit and snipe, no matter how good the vehicle is. But you have to think about getting forwards with your advance. It has enough mobility to be able to do so. It's kind of like a slower medium tank within that regard. And while the gun isn't going to win you any prizes for having great alpha or great damage per minute, when you're so accurate that you hit all of your shots, it still adds up. And so while you might not be the wild child that goes and picks up nine kills for the 4,800 damage like the Kampfpanzer did, you know, we'd be a little bit behind them on damage, a significant amount behind on kills, but we're still plodding on. And remember, this is a tier nine premium tank it will make you a lot of credits, as long as you are not bouncing gold. So to conclude, the T3 Jaeger is the first tier nine premium German tank destroyer. And I think because of that, there'll be a lot of interest in this tank. I can tell you that I think it's very balanced. I don't think it's going to be destroying any games that it's in. And I think it's a nice meaty tank for a variety of vehicles to have a lot of fun shooting. But still, from my catchphrase back in the day when the scorpion was so immensely popular i would always be saying it's always a scorpion because you get hit by them quite significantly from long range however with this vehicle having less firepower than the scorpion and less alpha damage at a higher tier it's not going to be so annoying as a scorpion i feel but just don't expect to be dodging many shells when one of them is firing at you at least, if you are, it won't be the tank's fault. It's going to be a user error. And so uh, do I think this is the new best tier 9 tank destroyer, at least premium one? Um, no, I think the TL7 is significantly better in the majority of situations. And I think even the WTF Panzer IV will be better for quite a few scenarios where you just want to have raw firepower. And I think the WZ120 GFT is actually a very underrated tier 9 Chinese tank destroyer with great firepower, great camo and better mobility than this. However, for all of this tank's faults, I will say it has incredibly comfortable gameplay. And for any of you out there who want to take it a little bit easy and still make some credits at the same time, then maybe this will be the premium tank for you. And this vehicle gets a thumbs up from me for, for fitting into the player base for that kind of comfortable playstyle, And also another thumbs up from me to Wargaming for introducing a different enough tier 9 tank destroyer that isn't just flat out OP, but is still reasonably fun to play. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was my full T3 Jaeger tank review. Really hope this one helped you out and it was useful. If it did, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And let me know in the comments what you think about the T3 Jaeger. Are you going to try and get your hands on one or do you think it just looks so mundane and not spectacular that you are not interested? And if you're watching this video as it goes live on Monday, I'm going to be going live all day on twitch.tv forward slash quickie baby playing the brand new tanks. 
as well as also giving out more drops with Twitch tokens so you can get a variety of cool rewards. So come along and see some live gameplay in the T3 Jaeger and the Yag Tiger prototype so you can see if it's any good when I'm not just cherry picking my games. So really looking forward to seeing you all live right now on twitch.tv forward slash quickie baby. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.